About a year ago, I told Leela I would never go tent camping ever again. It didn't take. This could very well be a mistake. Can I make it up this hill? That would be a no. But tonight I'm sleeping, uh, in the bed of my truck. Because Leela and I want to try out truck camping, a little more adventure. So we bought a truck tent for $189. I'm going to show you how to set it up, give you a full tour of our truck camper setup so far, and tell you what I think. Leela's in Utah with Indiana Jones and David Jones, my grandkids, whom I have not seen in a very long time. So I want to see those guys. But then Leela and I are going to head over to Idaho to pick up a tractor. So I got to head over to... You don't mind being on YouTube, do you? No. And, oh, check this out. Look at that. There is a truck camper shell over there. I wonder if somebody's loose. Should we go check it out? Let's go over here and see if I get murdered. Hello? Anybody home? Well, I'm guessing uh, nobody lives there anymore. I'm starting to get a little bit worried. I need light, I need no rain, and at least two or three bars of internet because I don't want to be out in the middle of nowhere with no cell service. The good news is I'm not sleepy. The bad news is I just entered the cliffs of insanity. No cell service for like, 3.7 million miles. So I'm looking for BLM or National Forest Land where I can where I can camp or I'll just have to stealth camp and not get caught. Please close gate. Bureau of Land Management. That means it's not private property. I got a tiny bit of internet here. We missed the uh, daylight thing, but it's not raining, so I, this this could be the answer. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Which way to go? Let's go left. Sand here. I don't know where I am here. This is not quite how I envisioned this going down. Here's here's the lay of the land. Got the trailer. I need to remove all those bungee cords, get that thing off, and get a whole tent set up before I freeze to death. Took me about an hour to set up the tent when I tested it yesterday. Now we get to see if my little impromptu bed is dry. And uh, I gotta. I just bungeed it to the trailer so it doesn't blow in the middle of the night. In the morning, I have to, you know. Here's my house for the night. <sighs> little tripped out. I'm in the middle of like nowhere and minimal cell service. If I get eaten, nobody's gonna know. I don't know what wild animals are out here. Let's see how long it takes me to set it up this time and the wind is starting to kick up. Here we go. Let's go. Rain fly. Uh, I might risk not using that. To install this thing, it just has straps that go on each side. You start with the door to get in on that side. You strap it in over here, and it's got these little slits in the corners so that it fits on kind of evenly back here. And it has, you know, decent, decent bungees. The hooks are plastic so they don't scratch your truck. And the trick is you need to have this thing lined up even with the bed liner. There's a seam here. The seam has to be lined up with the bed liner to make this thing stick. And then you have this that goes under the tailgate. So you lift up the tailgate, and this is what kind of holds it in place. You wrap this around the tailgate here, and it's all a balance of not ripping things, but keeping it tight. And you're supposed to have the door open, which I didn't. So let me open the door. Yeah, it is going considerably faster this time. It has on the inside these orange straps, that are supposed to go down through the tailgate, but I, uh, they kind of don't stick very well. There's not a good place for them on my truck. So these orange inner straps here, I am just going to connect them to my little tie downs on the inside. You don't rip these things super tight. Just grab this guy, pull it tight here. 
This is the A strap and the D goes over it or something like that, or vice versa. If I have this seam lined up evenly, we'll be in good shape. The next thing you need to do is break out these poles and it has one for here and two that cross in the middle. You just snap them together. Two of them have an orange band on the end like that. And those are the big cross ones. I just looked on an app called The Dirt. There's a link for that down below. According to The Dirt, this is BLM land and according to that gate, so I'm probably safe to camp here, I think. And you've got these orange things, just, just like any tent. When my kids were young, we do a father-son outing with our church every year and me and the boys, we would arrive late every single time. We would always set up a tent in the dark. It was our tradition. And apparently nothing has changed. And what you do is you just shove all the poles through and then you start raising the roof. And it's got little pouches over here for these things to go in, little pockets. We just have to do the black one here for the door opening. You know, I never, <laughs> I never like setting up tents, but this one's not too bad, especially considering the wind and the darkness. So I think you do these middle ones first and it should start to go up now look at it. it's kind of almost up right and you get the front door here oh it goes through here i missed a spot right here it has to go through that spot it's got some clips for these guys only the other ones don't have these clips on this side now you can tighten them down a little bit inside the tent you pull this up and over a little bit and it's not quite exactly right. This is supposed to go all the way over, but you know what? It's close enough for me, man, for tonight. Should be dialed in maybe a little bit more, but this is great. So we're gonna call that good. How long did it take me to set this thing up in the dark? My second time ever? Let's see, 12 minutes and 50 seconds. So four times faster, five times faster than the first time. So not bad, man. If you can set this thing up in 15 minutes in the dark, in the wind, I'm impressed. I'm gonna set this up in here and then I'll show you the. Remember how I was gonna leave the rain fly off? It started raining, naturally, of course. And I don't know how to put it on. Ah! Can't see anything. I could look at the directions. It has to be this, right? Right at the front. Not real. Took a minute to get set up, but. It's kind of nice, peaceful out here. Here it is, all set up for the night. I'm about to make some dinner. Gonna make some homemade soup right there. That is just a mattress topper, four inches. Got it at Walmart. And I, you know, we are boomers, not millennials. So I just made a whole bed with a couple pillows and some sheets. It's a full size bed. I do have a backup sleeping bag and jacket and a beanie if it gets cold. I'm pretty stoked. I think it uh, needs to be comfortable in spite of the rain and wind. It's actually pretty comfortable in here and I'm, uh, I'm kind of hot. I don't know if I'm at altitude because this stuff is boiling like instantly. Maybe it's because of butane or something, but I can't imagine the sausage part is hot. Mm. I'm telling you, man, camping food. It's the answer. I'm really full. I'm pretty comfortable. Good night. Good morning. That actually wasn't too terrible. Whenever I'm alone, like in the middle of nowhere by myself, I think of those like survival shows and they say the number one rule of survival is don't get hurt. So it makes me afraid to uh, do things even like jump off my tailgate because you know. Uh, I never got good at this. Huh. Huh. My contact blew away. Let me show you how I deal with some of the basic necessities of life while truck camping. Remember I'm used to being in an RV where everything is right there but you gotta you gotta think about everything in advance and I have not, but here's what's going on so far. Number one, let's talk a little bit about this tent. You might wonder like, Trevor, why did you buy that particular tent? Well, I did a ton of research and frankly, uh, that was the only one that I could get in three days before I left on this trip. And it works out great because it has one of the features that I really want, which is 
I want it to go just over the top of the of the of the bed and not wrap around. Some of them have the liner go all the way inside, but when you have the liner go all the way inside, I'd have to pull all this stuff out every time. This way I can just collapse the tent and put a tarp over it. And frankly, that whole tarpy thing is a big pain. So if we do get into this, I would love to get a truck topper. What am I doing for a kitchen? Well, there's my kitchen right there. And uh, this is my, my sink. And this is how I wash the dishes. And this is also my bathroom. This bed actually turned out to be really comfortable. I've got my two pillows there, Leela's two pillows behind there when I pick her up. And if we decide to build this thing out, we're for sure gonna get a topper for it and we'll do something really cool in here. I'm kind of excited to show you what we might do. Chairs, easy, 25 bucks, Walmart, got two of those. And they're short enough to sit in here and they're tall enough to sit outside. For water, I got three of these. There are better solutions for water. The one thing I did forget is soap but I've got paper towels and water, so I've kind of washed up. And I'm storing, you know, food and other supplies in here. Got lots of room in the back of this thing. For me, I have a lot of junk that needs charging. I know a lot of people do it nowadays with phones and laptops and cameras and stuff. And there are a lot of options for that, but luckily this truck comes with this underneath there. There's a 400 watt inverter, which turns DC power, battery power into AC power. So I can plug into this outlet right here. It's a regular 110, 120 outlet and plug this thing into it. And now I can charge all of my junk down there and I could even plug my laptop in there and charge it. The only drawback to that is I need to have the truck running. Otherwise it would kill my truck battery. But if you're driving, you can charge all your stuff and then usually be good for the night. The beauty of truck camping is you can go places where you wouldn't go if you had an RV. And I for sure wouldn't be here with the RV. I had to drive over that there and it was really sketchy now with that trailer i'm towing no problem nothing can take it but my rv would have rattled apart and up here let me give you a little tour of where i am it's kind of awesome out here i love being out here by myself it's dude i am for sure not looking forward to taking this thing down in the wind and i'm not looking forward to putting that tarp on it that tarp thing is a freaking nightmare that's definitely not sustainable i gotta i gotta figure that out this isn't sketchy at all and it's going to never never land um i'm not exactly sure how i'm going to exit onto a road somewhere not in four-wheel drive yet hopefully i won't need it okay i had to turn around because i know i can get out that way but can i make it up this hill in two-wheel drive is the question That would be a no. That's as far as I got. And I've got to make it up there somehow. This is very soft dirt. Let's uh, see if four wheel drive fixes all of that. <laughs> Here we go. Oh yeah, like a boss. Heck yeah, baby. Woohoo! One thing we tend to take for granted in RV is having a built in restroom. And uh, I mean, I did bring a solution. I am not looking forward to this. To see the first time Leela and I tried truck camping, click right up there. We can't wait to share our adventures with you.